Hey everyone, this is Kamran and in this lesson we're going to talk about the basics of system design. We're going to take a hypothetical example of an application and we're going to see how we can scale it from a limited number of users to support a significant number of users on the website. We're also going to look at some of the issues that can happen in a production application and see how we can fix them. Let's say that we are building a notes application that lets the users to create, read, update and delete the notes. It's a simple React application that talks to a Node.js API and everything is stored in the Postgre database. Let's say that our application is ready and now it's time to deploy it to the server so that people can use it. Our initial setup can look like this. Let's say that we took the droplet on the digital ocean or Linode. So we have just one server. It's running a Linux operating system and our application and database are running on the same server. Our users interact with the server through the URL and they start creating the nodes. In the beginning, we just have one GB of RAM and one core processor, which is enough to support the limited number of users that we are getting per day. Everything is working fine the people are starting to use our application and they're creating the notes but one day you start getting complaints from the users that the website is not available you look at the server and you find out that our instance has been deleted due to some issue on the digital ocean side and we don't have access to our database or the application anymore so you go ahead and you set up everything and then you redeploy the website and our website is back up again but then you start getting complaints from the users that they can't log in you look at the database and you find out that our database is empty because when our server Server crashed all our data was gone with it and you don't have any way to restore the data because you did not take any backups and you can't do anything apart from apologizing to the users and ask them to create new accounts and start from scratch and you promise that from now on you will take care of their data and then you start implementing the database backup strategy so you write a cron job that runs two times a day take the backup of the database and stores it on the server so that whenever something goes wrong we can restore the last backup that we have and our users get their data back but we can't keep the backup on the same server because if our server goes down our backup goes away with it and we can't restore it so to fix this issue we take the backup and we push it to the aws s3 so that even if our server is gone we still have the access to the database backups and also we verify the backups from time to time to make sure that our backups are restorable okay now we have the database backup strategy in place our users are happy and they are using the application but after some time you find out that our application is down again people were getting 500 errors sometimes and then they were starting to to get the 404s you go to the server and you found out that the droplet is there so it's not the same issue that happened last time you decide to look at the logs so you ssh into the server to find out what is wrong but you don't find any logs because you were writing just to the standard output but then you try to guess what is wrong because we were getting the 404s so it means that our server the application is down so our node server is not running and that's why it is giving us the 404s. To fix the issue, we just restart the server and our application is back up again. And also we improve our logic for writing the logs. So we are not just writing to the standard output, but we are also writing to the files so that whenever our application goes down, we can access the logs from the files. And also we implement the auto restart logic. So whenever our application is down, we bring it back up again and our users do not have to wait for us to go and fix the application. We can do that with the help of some process managers such as PM m2 or system d or upstart that keep looking at a process and whenever it goes down they bring it back up again and now everything is working and we're also ready to tackle any future issues because we have the logs in place and we also have the auto restart in place but after some time our application is up but still we start getting 500 error but we don't worry because we have the logs in place and we can look at the server logs and find out what is causing the error to happen we look at logs and we find out that our database connection pool has been saturated and our application is not able to access the database because it cannot create the connections to the database before we move ahead let's talk about the connection pooling so connection pooling is a strategy to keep the database connections open and reuse because connecting to a database can be an expensive task so what happens is there is something called connection pool and whenever we have a database connection and some client is done with using it it releases it and puts it in the connection pool so anyone else can come and reuse one of the connections from here instead of opening a new connection to the database in our current case it might have happened that some of the clients did not close the connection and all the connections are in use and our client is not able to create a new connection to the database and that's why we are getting the 500 error we face this issue because we were going with the database defaults and we did not try to configure the database properly as per our needs so we revisit 
visit the database configuration and use the proper values instead of the defaults. We fixed that by increasing the pool size. And our application is fixed and is back to normal again. And now our application is working fine, but we have plans to go global now. Previously, we were targeting only the people in Dubai, but let's say that we want to target the people in Europe and US as well. So we go ahead with the marketing campaign and we soon start getting complaints from the users. People are saying that our website is slow. You try to debug and you find out that the issue is happening because the people in US are sitting far away from the servers that we have and the request has to go through several hops to get to the server and get the response to the user. So to fix this issue, we decide to use some kind of caching in the client side and in the server side to speed up our request. And we also change some of our deployment strategy. So now we are building all the static assets and putting them in the S3. And we have put a CDN in front of the S3. So this CDN could be the cloud front edge. By edge, it means that whatever the server is closest to the user, it will use that server to serve the request of the user. So let's say that if someone is sitting in US, so whatever CDN is closest to that user will serve the request for that user. And the data, the HTML, CSS and the JavaScript will be cached on the CDN. And for the second user, it will be served from the CDN again. And this request does not have to come to the server again. And for caching of the dynamic content, we put Redis in front of our database. So before going to the database, we query the Redis and we check if we already have some data, we return it from there. Otherwise, we go to the database, get the data, put it in the Redis. So we don't have to query the database again and we return it from there. And now with these changes, our website is much faster and our users are happy. Now some time goes by and we notice that our storage is increasing abnormally. We find out that our logs are taking most of the space and this lack of space on the server is causing our processes to slow down. To fix this issue, we implement the log rotation, which means that we spread the log files by date and all the older logs are deleted after some time, which means that our logs don't pile up on the server and they don't take up the space abnormally. So with this, our server is back to normal and the slowness that was happening because of the lack of space is now gone. But after some time, we notice that our memory and CPU consumption is increasing. And since we have a single server and we have both the database and the application running on the same, both are competing for the resources and our application is not scaling well. To fix this issue, we decide to move the database to a separate server so that we can scale both our application and the database separately without any issues. And now we have more CPU and memory for both our database and the application and both are not competing anymore and our website is able to serve more users. People have been loving our application and we keep getting more and more traction, which means that our database has more load to handle and also we have this cron job running twice a day to back up the database during which we have so much data to process and our application slows down because our database is busy with the cron jobs in preparing the backups now to fix these issues we decide to do something about our database we know that our application has more reads than the writes because people are retrieving the nodes more than creating and updating the nodes we decide to spread the reads and writes onto the multiple database servers so now we always write to the primary database which replicates the data to the secondary databases where we read from. And whenever we have more load, we can keep adding more databases to read from because we know that our application has more reads than the writes. The process of splitting the data in multiple databases in this format is called database replication. Okay, so now that we have the backup cron jobs and all the reads going to these secondary databases and all the writes going to this primary database. This fixes our database issues and our website keeps working fine for some time. But now after some time, we notice that our single application server is not able to hold up to the load that we are getting now. We look at our infrastructure and we find out that our single application server is never going to be able to hold up to the load that we are getting. So we decide to add more application servers so that we can distribute the load among them. And to do that, apart from adding more servers, we need to add a load balancer, which is responsible for identifying the servers which have less load and distributing the traffic equally. So all the databases have equal traffic at any point of time and we don't have any burden in just one server. This fixes most of our issues related to the load and our application is able to scale well and handle a significant number of users. But now we have a different kind of problem. Remember the log files that we were creating in the application server? Now that we have multiple application servers, our logs are scattered onto the multiple servers. And whenever we have to debug some issue or look at the logs, we have to SSH into the multiple servers and look at the logs one by one to identify the issues. To fix this issue, we decide to go with the ELK stack. So ELK E stands for Elasticsearch, L for log stash and K for Kibana. So instead of writing the logs to the files that we have on the server, we decide to write the logs to the log stash. From there, the logs 
further indexed onto the Elasticsearch and K is for Kibana. Kibana provides us the search and visualization on the logs that we have on the servers. And now with this setup, we are able to serve a significant number of users without going down. And also we have the ELK stack in place so we can identify the issues from there instead of SSH into the server and looking at there. And that's it for our lesson. There's much more to the system design and there's a lot of detail that I have left on purpose and I will hopefully be covering them in the future videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.